What's up everyone and welcome to my tutorial video for using the Project Neptune Keylogger or whatever you want to use it for for that matter. So in this tutorial it's going to be a full feature going from start to end so I'm assuming that most of you already have Project Neptune installed on your computer but just in case the download link is Project Neptune with a hyphen in between dot net. From there, it's a simple clicking on the download and downloading the recent version. Now, the problem with this is ever since uh, it's been put back up, there's been a lot of updates. So I'm currently at 1.78, but within the past few days, there's been multiple updates. So you just want to make sure you always have the latest version. And there's an auto update, so you should be good for that. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to find your file in a .rar file. And for this, you're going to need to have WinRAR. I'm not going to go into that for the tutorial, but if you go to Google and you type in WinRAR, you'll be able to find a free download at the first link, which is safe and allows you to use RAR files. RAR files are just a more compressed version of zip files. So I would suggest getting that even just besides Project Neptune. Okay, so anyway, sorry, I'm so tired right now. So go into the folder where you uh, downloaded your new Project Neptune. And you're going to want to extract your files. And for me, I just did it to the desktop. OK, so here we have our new Project Neptune version 1.78 and that's all we want. So all we're going to do is double click open this and you've already probably seen I'm worried about this but the disassembler lib .dll, um, it might come up as a virus and what it is is as the program explains it um uh, it allows you to change settings for your actual um, uh, key logger such as copyright, icon, and uh, server stuff like that so do not delete that it is uh, it's not necessary and they've recently made that update but it's always good to have it so we're gonna start this up you also have it did okay sorry my computer's running really slow okay so here you have the GUI for Project Neptune which is not offered by a lot of keyloggers which is very nice so what you're going to do right here is, this is more of a every one use tutorial. And so we're not going to use um, file transfer protocol, we're just going to be using email. And you can't even use the file transfer protocol yet unless you're premium and you need the beta for that. And if you get your hands on that, you probably won't be watching the tutorial. So when you're making this a standard keylogger, right here you have one you're going to get a keylog. Um, I like 15. 10 to 15 minutes is a good indicator. You really don't need to change too much of that. Um, here you have your um, email settings. Now, right here is where you're going to enter your email to send, the password for that email, and the email to receive the logs that you've sent. And yes, you could actually send the logs to the same email if you so please. All up to you. Obviously, some people don't feel safe about putting their password on here, so it's very simple just to make a new um, uh, email on Gmail so I don't know why I wouldn't but I'm not going to put all of this in there all you're going to do is just type in your email at gmail.com your password and then your email that you're going to rece receive now if you're sending it from different ones such as live.com you come up here and instead of typing in Gmail you type in live now for convenience's sake I just use Gmail but it's up to you guys um, again, fire transfer protocol, we're not going to be using that. System-wide, um, I try to stay as discreet as possible because with a keylogger, obviously, um, uh, you don't want people knowing it's there. So when you kill the task manager, it's usually not the best thing. So just leave that there. Website blocking is not available. And for more software settings, you really don't need any of this. It's uh, It could be kind of overkill. So when you're just using a standard just login keys, you don't need to use it. As for installation, um, just keep it on this one. That's all you need. Um, for the installation directory, I just keep it on the app data folder. Again, there's really nothing that you have to do with it. Just leave that alone. 
Um, for here, for the original file, you could do nothing. So after the execute, just kind of just sits there, and they're like, all right. And when they delete slash melt it, that means that it's just gone, like to off their computer. And here it sets the file to hidden, so it disappears, but it's still there. So it's up to you. I just keep up. I click on do nothing, and it's the best in my opinion. Oops, sorry about that. Extra options. I'm not one for fake error messages. I'm just one for clicking it and it runs. Um, I like getting an installation message on the user program's first run because you kind of know what's going on. Um, screenshots, that's for premium again, but if you set it to, like I said, every 15 minutes, then every 15 minutes you get a screenshot of what they're doing. And uh, that's kind of cool, but I mean, again, it's just an extra. For your server creation, you can make whatever you want. Um, I mean, just yeah, obviously you wouldn't want to do that, but um, uh, you know, just for example purposes, you now um, uh, you can't use these two. These are premium. If you want to change the file icon, um, I would suggest getting uh, another program. I could suggest those, but on this video, it's just merely a tutorial. File pumping is also premium. That's not as much. Don't need to worry about that. Um, as for setting the service process, I suggest setting it something. How about? AOE hosts.exe because when someone sees hosts in there, they automatically freak out. So if you ask me, that's the best. And then for app settings, you could save it if you wanted to. You really don't need to. Um, a file binder, for those of you who don't know, it allows you to bind two executable files to each other. So for example, if I bound my keylogger to another.exe that I had, when you clicked on the one exe, it would execute. The original exe as well as the binded file in this case being the keylogger so after that all i do is click on generate your new server save it to wherever you want to give it a name of test okay and it'll compile it in just a second And there it is, our keylogger all ready to go. And as you can see, it allows us to have the description as the hack, copyright, and everything else. So this is just a base tutorial. And then obviously, once someone double clicks on this, it will activate. And uh, if I had everything set up, it would actually infect me. Let's set up the email just for tutorial purposes. So if you guys have any questions, um, please you know direct them toward me. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. Thanks so much for watching the video. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions or if you want to learn more about being able to change um, uh, file icons or even um, uh, the .exe at the end to make it more believable, I can show you guys that too. But for now, this is just a simple tutorial. So thanks for watching, you guys. Have a good one.